In this video, we'll be looking at how to screen correct your images using advanced dodging and blending in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Joey that and basically we're going to look at how I use my brush tools to screen correct my image using a couple of um, curves adjustment layers in Photoshop. This is actually going to be a voiceover video. So if you're looking at me editing and at the same time talking, well, you're not in luck. And basically it's going to be quite a long video, right? So bear with me and please stay and learn and if you're new here to my youtube channel please subscribe if you're already here and haven't turned on that bell notification icon hit that bell notification icon to get notified when i drop a new video here on youtube and let's just get right to our intro video for today whenever i start to research in photoshop trying to use dodging and burning right i try to split my screen as you can see i'm splitting the screen go to window arrange you see new window for capture one and it you tap on that and you get um two tabs showing up in photoshop and you further go to window arrange and two vertical up that actually splits up your screen so that one will be a zoomed in version and the one on the right will be a zoomed up version so that you don't get to zoom in and zoom out or even if you're zoomed in when you're editing on the left you get to see the result on the right probably how someone will see it online so basically my skin matching um, is composed of two um, curves where you have the dodge and the burn with a brush flow of two um, I try to even out the tones in the shadows Normally, I work around the dodge more than the bend, but the whole idea is, is trying to even out the tones in, or oh sorry, on the image, basically. So as you can see, I'm trying to tone down the shadow around the forehead and basically closer to the cheek and all that. And it's going to take some time around here. And since I'm using a Wacom tablet, um, pressure sensitivity is taken into consideration. Um, the flow of the brush is at 2 as you can see. And the size of the brush matter, right? So whenever I'm working around the area, I increase the brush according to the area I'm working at. And I decrease the brush according to the area I'm also working at. explain this whatever I do on the left in the zoomed in version gets to be seen at the right it's not as if I'm working on two different images it's the same image but just split into two it actually helps if if, if you're the type reader researcher where you have to zoom in and work on your image but if um you're okay with zooming in and zooming out at the same time you can just work with one image um how about it but i think this is the best way i also learned that it's online right i keep on i keep on learning stuff so that i can basically come and explain that as you can see i'm still trying to tune out the um, shadows around the forehead if you're wondering how i created or i have all these layers here the subject dodging and burning you guys should check out uh, my previous video on dodging and burning i think i'll suggest the link there i have i have in there how i went about creating all these layers right and you can also create your action basically so this is just a video to show you guys how I intensively use um, curves 
in Photoshop to dodge and bend my images. And the first thing to look out for is um, getting a good makeup artist, right? Who knows how to blend skin tones so that you don't get to deal with different colors whilst you are dodging and bending. Um, I wish there was kind of like a difficulty with skin tones. I think I would have shown in the how I would fix that with a couple of layers, not basically uh, frequency frequency separation, but um, an empty layer and a brush to just to um, um, how should I put this? Just to um, tone the uh, tone the skin or that particular area that is out of skin color to the surrounding skin color. And after. So this is what we've been able to accomplish so far and it's sometimes good to see the zoomed out version because when you're zoomed in you might be thinking you're doing something good but the moment you set your eyes upon a zoomed out version what you think you'll be posting what you think everyone sees you realize um, you're actually going overboard when you're zoomed in right so it's always good I would advise you to split your screen into two. That is if you have a faster running machine. But if you don't have a faster running machine, well, you still have to do with the one screen. So the whole concept around the skin correction um, with dodging and burning is that um, you're trying to match the skin tones in between the highlights and the shadows and basically the mid tones, right? So earlier, if you could check around the forehead, there was a whole lot of what shadows. And to me, if I see such things, I try to tone the shadows down. I don't really take away the shadows, I tone the shadows down. In the black and white, all you see is what? Black, white, and gray, right? So I basically bring the black towards the gray area, not into the white area. White, we presume as highlight. Black we presume is shadows and grey we presume is what? Uh, mid tone. So I try as much as possible to tone down to the grey area so that um, it matches the surrounding skin tones. That is basically what I'm doing here in the skin correcting, dodging and burning. So it's more like um, dodging my shadows and burning my highlights. Right? To tone down or to skin match. The two different skin tones look perfect to the eye but i don't go overboard with all this because going overboard will actually flatten the image people really don't know about this but dodging and burning is actually if not done well is a very destructive way of frequency separation right although you don't leave your textures you keep your images as natural as possible but the more time you spend around dodging and burning i learned this the hard way the more time you spend around dodging and burning, um, trying to perfect everything, basically makes your image very, very, very soft. If it is more of a close-up, well, you're safe there because you get to see textures and you get to see that your images are soft too. But if it's kind of a far away picture, um, let's say from the belly upwards to the head kind of picture or kind of portrait, and you go overboard with it, you kind of lose. The details in the picture and the picture becomes very soft so watch it when you're actually dodging and burning although it's the best way um, personally for me at the moment is the best way to retouch an image you just have to look out for not going overboard with it
advisable to start around the forehead because um, I believe when I'm trying to reach a certain level dodging a man and I work around the floor you I try to send it to perfection I kind of feel fulfilled that okay maybe the worst area which is basically the forehead has been cleansed off or sorry has been masked or has been skin corrected it kind of gives you the kind of gives you hope or more vigor to continue working around certain parts of the face So moving down to the chin area, as you can see in the right um, part of the video, looking around the forehead, you guys can see that basically um, it's looking good already. And targeting the chin area, I'm trying to match the um, shadows over there. So I'm still use, I'm using a bend been um, layer now trying to match in the shadows although you I'm burning my what, um, shadows and so I'm burning my highlights and dodging my shadows it's not always the case skin correction is all about trying to blend the skin tones together so if I look at the image and um, within the shadowy area I have to fix some parts of the shadow area so that I can match the following shadowy area, I would use the bend to fix it. Yeah, I know, I mentioned you'd have to dodge your shadows and bend your highlights, but skin correction is all about knowing the right time to use um, the bend and the dodge, let's say, at one particular area of the image, taking into consideration what we are doing right now. always follow um, the flow on the image you're editing you realize within her cheeky areas um, it's more shadowy than highlighty whatever that word is and somewhere around the forehead it's more highlighted areas together with some kind of mid-tones than more shadows so always follow the flow on the subjects you are dodging and burning and trust me you would get great results so looking at um, the cheek area now you realize um, where I'm trying to fix now I'm using the bend to tone the line there in underneath the nose right yes so like I said I am following the flow over there I could have used dodge by using dodge will expose the image too much sorry will expose the cheeks too much and take out the smooth sailing line over there that cuts out the cheeks from the face giving her that um, 3d kind of looking jawline i hope you get what i'm trying to say so basically try and follow the flow on the subjects you are editing and trust me you would get great results you don't really always have to dodge out your shadows sometimes it's good to follow the shadows over there and bend along with the shadows you see try to tone down the harsh shadows but i don't really really get harsh shadows and bend in the other parts of the skin where you think has um like brighter shadows let me put it that way so brighter shadows and harsh shadows try and work with that for me
aim here is to maintain the image to its natural state as possible as how you saw the model you were shooting or how you saw the image being posted out there looked like so i i try to keep the image close to its natural state as possible to every human right it may, uh, um, having to retouch a lot of portraits lately lately i realized there's um, kind of a bum underneath the chin making um a younger person look kind of old i sometimes leave that um, bit of bum underneath did i say the chin underneath the mouth right that shows your mouth is protruding out, uh, protruding out. sorry sorry protruding out that i sometimes leave it if it makes it look too more natural but if it's more of a distraction i also take it out sometimes a one day practice where you think you can watch just good to go i suggest you practice more if you have the time on your hand to edit more and more and more using those and i didn't get this right the first time trust me um i think i did the first time i showed it to a friend or there were a couple of friends around the very first time i did dodging them learning alone a skin retouching there were a couple of friends around i showed it to them it was cool and i continued doing it more and more and more and i think I am getting there although I'm still not perfect with this dodging and bending I still want to know more yes keep on learning and you get to realize you're good at what you are doing so as you can see I've zoomed in so close into the image this is what people might turn micro dodging and bending Micro dodging and bending basically is the same as skin correction or corrective dodging and bending or however you will name it. Still dodging my highlights. Hey, still dodging my shadows and bending my highlights. And I would be glad if you keep an eye on the brush size how i increase and decrease at the same time to get a particular brush size to work with and the area i am working at and then if done well can be a great tool a uh, great method of skin retouching I, I think I used an hour and 15 minutes when I was dodging and bending this particular video so this particular image for this tutorial video so I had to fast forward some parts of the video so that I can crumple everything I said so that I wouldn't make it a boring one hour dodging and bending video. I hope you guys like this compared to the other one I dropped the last time. Since this is more um, kind of interactive, although nobody's talking to me, but you guys hear what I'm trying to say. So if you think you have a problem with this video after watching this, leave a comment down in the description below um is that description actually no leave your comment down the comment section below and let me know what um your problem is about this video and if i can tackle it i will tackle it then we'll see what we have to do and oh as a bonus i would drop a couple of the raw files from this shoot actually i you guys should go check the behind the scenes it's 
um, the video before this right so I will drop a couple of the pictures from her session then you guys should try your hands on them and I can see if that there's been an improvement so far because I'm getting a whole lot of comments that I'm, I'm helping people out with my video content and all that and I'm kind of happy you guys are getting back to me on that so I will really appreciate it if you let me know down in the comment section below what you think about my videos and what you think I should be doing more often whether it's a BTS or whether it's a retouching you guys just let me know so to display the max sliders you hold alt on the keyboard and you click on the max right yes so if you're using Wacom tablet and you don't know the brush settings I'm using this is basically what I do when I have a new Wacom tablet I change everything to pen pressure since I am using pen pressure um, sensitivity right and for those with the mouse um, I don't think this is your problem at the moment and our advice if, if you're trying to follow um, dodging and burning how to really master dodging and burning I would really advise getting a graphics tablet being it's Wacom, Creon and uh, many other versions that are out there Oh, and I didn't mention this, always use a soft brush, a very, very soft brush. Never use a hard brush when you're dodging and burning. So to check if you're using a soft brush or a hard brush, right click, move your cursor around the image and right click on your image. You get to see opacity and hardness. Move the hardness to zero. That shows that you're using a soft brush. So that's it about the brush settings in Photoshop whenever I'm using um, the Wacom tablet to edit. If you didn't get that, just rewind or reverse the video to that part. Check out the settings I'm using. Save it for yours and continue using it. And I'm sure it will help you because pressure sensitivity helps in dodging and burning. The whole idea about dodging and burning is to build up on what you're doing you don't just have to give one stroke and everything is a uh, done deal for you no that's actually a lazy way so i advise you watch other videos on dodging and burning for better understanding but the whole concept about this is building up building up so keep it in mind you build up your dodge you build up your brain in skin correction All the time we are used in dodging and burning um, images, I have got to realize that I can use dodging and burning to do a whole lot. Ironing clothes, fixing lip, the um, tones around the lips, basically shaping the nose, contouring, highlighting, fixing gaps in between eyelashes, eyebrows toning down um, your eye bags you get to see actually how I tone down the eye bag on the right sorry 
or from the video's perspective on the right cheek bar if you're looking at the human's perspective it's the left cheek the eye bag you see over there the dodging and bending can be used to take out or tone down the eye bag you're seeing over there so if you're learning well well, it might be one of your greatest weapons in your arsenal. I'm not saying you should learn this by force. No. Learn it together with other great methods you know. And know how to balance the two of them. Alright, so I put out a question that um, which of these two is the best uh, method to skin retouching? Figuring separation and dodging and burning. Well, I have some of the greatest photographers or the best photographers I've met here in GH telling me a right proportion of both of them can give you a very good image. People are voting 100% for dodging and bend and some also choosing frequency separation. Well, from someone who upgraded from frequency separation, trust me, if you do frequency separation right, back then I used to think I was doing it right because you have to believe in yourself actually. So. Back then I used to think I was doing all right, so I was always keeping things to its natural state as possible. But after learning dodging and men, I realized whenever I use frequency separation, my images come out hard. I don't know how to put this, but we have soft images and we have hard images. Come out too strong, come out too hard for me. After using dodging and burning, I realized most of my images these days are becoming soft and I like what I am seeing. So enough about the chit chat. When I was saying something about um, taking out the eye bags earlier, as you guys can see, the eye bag was basically shadows, right? So I had to what? dodge out my shadows, and now you don't see the eye bag anymore. Yes. So know when to use your dodge tool, know when to use your bend tool, and correctively how to use it on the image and a quick tip whenever you are dodging and bending or retouching in general whether frequency separation whether dodging and bending whether um, skin tone and anything you are doing in there take a break sometime because you never know what it is that you're doing right after editing the, the picture you are editing or the number of hours you spend behind the picture editing take your eye off the picture or the image you're editing work around something else let's say play around with your phone go stretch or something like that the moment you come back and sit behind the laptop or whatever it is you're using to edit the image you realize there are some tiny mistakes you missed out there that you could have um, fixed if you uh sorry you could have missed if you are continually editing the picture without taking breaks in there yes the breaks in there will take out some time but come on it actually helps i learned this the hard way one time i finished editing a particular picture i thought i'd done it all got up from the picture two or three hours later and i realized i did a shitty work i had to come back and redo the whole thing over again and it was stressful so once a while please do take some breaks when you are editing your images if it is two hours three hours please do take a break a 10, a 10 to 15 minutes break wouldn't kill you so save yourself some time and trouble take the breaks and you see what we're doing here so all too soon i think um, what we are doing here in the skin match and dodging and burning is actually paying off so as you can see we started from scratch which was west and we are here now where almost every um, part of the image has its, um, has its tone looking closer to the other but with um, its differentiation you know this is a highlighted area this is um, a, um, a shadowy area so in my opinion i would say skin matching takes majority of the time in dodging and burning you realize i've not even touched my global dodging and burning nor the eye we'll, we'll come back to the eye 
which is quite simple but majority of the time is spent in skin mashing so like i was saying earlier if you're looking at wondering how these um, folders were created i have an earlier video on how i created all these folders um i think we're all processing in photoshop a complete version of them and i used a dark melanin model a pen with a yellow eyeshadow so you just check in my previous video and watch that one it's also a, a, a full video on dodging and burning that is if you don't get anything here try watching that one then come back to watching this or combine the two and watch the two at your leisure time and i think you'll be good to go on this um, concept of dodging and burning at the eye folder you realize the same dodge and burn layers in them 
yes basically it's just dodging and burning like i've been saying all these while you dodge your sh um, shadows you burn your highlights same goes for the eye too Eye, the highlights in the eye you tone down the highlights with your bend you tone down the shadows with your dot basically the same process we've been using all this while but when you go overboard with the eye you realize the eye becomes flat yeah so in there there will be a session where i create a new folder so i create a new layer and i change the blending mode to soft light I pick a normal brush with white and black um, with a flow of five and I try to burn underneath where the eyelashes are obviously you know the eyelashes are creating some shadows over the eye right and with uh, underneath the eyelid should I say immediately above the eyelid you realize there are some highlighted parts over there yes yeah, so that brings out the 3d version in the eye so you burn just underneath the eyelashes and you dodge right above the um, eyelid basically that's all there is to dodging and burning in the eye so all I'm doing here is trying to fix the, um, the smudges in there the highlighted parts the shadowy parts toning them down I'll do the same thing on the left side or on the right side as you can see in the video basically it's the left side because if uh, you, you be if, if you're sitting as the model is the left eye but watch watching the video this way it's the right side however you want to term it oh, the world is a confusing place so fixing those small smudges in there and i think i'll be good to go but yeah you can see the new layer thing i was talking about it's more like highlighting and contouring the eye to bring out the 3d version of the eye the eye pops out the eye is more like a semicircular stuff or a semicircular organ or however you get to see it out that's how the eye looks like for me so if i'm able to keep that dimensional looking eye in the 3d universe or 3d form i go with it If you haven't noticed, check the blending modes for the eye um, layers. You realize it's on luminosity. When you go back to skin matching, it's on normal. Normal actually deals with the lightness and color, um, color around the skin you're working around. You get it. But with the luminosity, you're only dealing with the lightness, not the color. Just the lightness and not the color. That is how the luminosity blending mode works. So from here on you realize the eye and the global dodge and burn has the luminosity blending mode and the skin matching dodging and burning has the normal blending mode. run out the video will play out and it's obviously self-explanatory global dodging and burning you dodge your highlights you burn your shadows the normal dodging and burning you all know but with this i change the flow to four depending on how fast i want my dodging and burning process to go um it's dependent on the flow i use for the brush 
so i've been using a brush all this while and a couple of curve adjustment layers and i got to um, end up with this good looking good retouched image so learn guys keep on learning and you never know maybe maybe just maybe you might be the best retoucher of our time well that's what i'm hoping for so keep on advertisement if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel please do subscribe if you're new here actually and if you're already here and you haven't turned on your notification icon please hit that bell notification icon get notified whenever i drop a new video here on my youtube channel if you're not following me on instagram please do go follow me on instagram i'll leave a link down in the description below so you can check out this image i posted and a couple of them the other um, other images i also posted which is actually from the same session and some other great images i have there on my page right so thanks guys and until the next video bye